Welcome to the Eden Podcast, where we true the verse of Genesis 3.16, and we discover that God didn't curse Eve or Adam or limit woman in any way. There's a well-loved movie titled Toy Story. Its lovable characters include the toy Sheriff Woody and the space-themed plastic action figure Buzz Lightyear. As fun as Toy Story is, we're going to give a similar-sounding title to this episode of The Eden Podcast. We're calling it Joy Story. (laughs) I'm privileged to interview Dr. Joy Fleming on her story. She's a former Old Testament professor in French-speaking Africa and is a licensed psychologist who sees a full caseload of clients every day and well into the evening. She is co-founder of the True 316 Foundation, and her doctoral research on Genesis 2 and 3, and especially Genesis 316, is at the heart of everything we do here on The Eden Podcast. Joy and I met and married while each of us were seminary students in Illinois, and we now have two grown children who are married, and they are the parents of our fabulous four grandkids. Welcome, Joy. In this episode, we're looking forward to learning your story. I have some interesting stories, and I'm looking forward to this time together. How did you come to research Genesis chapters 2 and 3 for your doctoral dissertation? Well, there are several steps along the way here that led me to this. First of all, I remember as a young girl reading the Bible and being puzzled by some of the things I was reading in Genesis 2 and 3, especially Genesis 3.16. It just seemed out of character of God to be making the woman now having to give birth to children in pain. And I was puzzled. And I remember praying about that and talking to God and saying, you know, I don't understand this, but I do know you and you can help me understand this. So Would you, at some point in my life, help me to better understand this passage and this verse? I'm giving that request to you. And then I just kind of put that on the shelf and went on with my life and didn't think about it for a long time. Later on, I probably was about 12, 13 or so, maybe younger, when I was praying that prayer. Then later I went to college and... uh, had the opportunity to talk with other students at a Christian college that I attended. There were two professors that were especially helpful, Ruth Bamford and Zandra Lindblade. And I remember having good discussions with them about these biblical passages and the sociology of women and men in our culture, how people relate and how the learning that we are socialized into as children and teenagers and young adults affects our lives. And there were other students that were discussing these questions and issues too, and we had good conversations and meetings actually about this. Then I remember going to seminary because I wanted to study Greek, and I wanted to be able to study in depth the biblical passages about many subjects. While I was studying Greek, I then had the opportunity to learn Hebrew, and I enjoyed those biblical languages so much. I enjoy language learning and so on. Those were good years, and I tried to study these passages somewhat, although I was really studying the whole Bible. That's where you and I met, Bruce, and after getting married and my completing my studies, we moved to France. We were planning to go to the French-speaking world and do some teaching there. And while we lived in France, we spent time living in Strasbourg. So that was a beautiful town on the French side of the Rhine River across from the Black Forest. And I remember especially going to a retreat. We were new in the area. And we wanted to get to know people in a church, get to know French people while we would be doing our studies there. The church we went to was having a retreat. They studied a different subject each year. And there was a group of people that were pretty 
serious about wanting to study together each year. We discovered that the subject they were studying that year was the subject of gender issues, women and men and their relationships according to the Bible. We enjoyed meeting those people that weekend. They divided into three study groups. The first group was on Genesis 2 and 3. The second group was on Jesus and the Gospels. The third group was on the Pauline epistles in the New Testament. There were probably about 40 people or so, something like that, at that retreat that weekend, and we really enjoyed the interaction together, getting to know people. I wanted to go to the Genesis 2 and 3 groups since I was going to be studying Old Testament at the University of Strasbourg and working on my doctoral degree in Old Testament there. And Bruce, I think you were interested in the New Testament, but you were willing to come with me to the Old Testament group. Yeah, it was, it was a good weekend together, so why would we separate? <laughs> so we enjoyed being together in that small group within the retreat group. Everybody worked together to share what we noticed in the text. And then at the end of the retreat, they had us report each of the three small groups to the larger group on what we had learned. So when we came back together, each group reported and uh, someone from our Genesis group gave a summary of our findings. Similarly for the Jesus and the Gospels group, And then the last group was the Pauline Epistles. And I remember especially that report. It was done by a French Canadian who had married a French woman from the church. And he was very animated in his presentation. He was tall, had a black beard, black curly beard, nice fellow. I remember he had flip charts and he had many pages of written material that the group had come up with as they discussed the Pauline epistles. So he took the longest amount of time, really quite a long time, explaining each of the pages on his flip chart. Finally, we were basically out of time for the end of the retreat, but I had been troubled by something he had shared that kind of came through the whole presentation that he gave. Everything he presented was predicated on some presuppositions regarding Genesis 2 and 3. Most of all, that there was a hierarchy in creation of the man over the woman. The man was to be the decision maker and should tell the woman what to do. So he was like the leader and she was the follower. Well, the problem that I noticed was that the Genesis text did not say that. And there was nowhere in the account in Genesis 2 and 3 where it had said that. God did not say to the man, you are to make her decisions for her or tell her what to do. And so I found myself feeling very uncomfortable as he gave this presentation because if the whole group felt that that's what was the case, we hadn't examined that foundational issue at all. And it would skew our findings of the New Testament passages and what they were saying. I tend to be a more quiet individual, but being disturbed by this and realizing I needed to speak up or nothing would be said challenging this. And being an American in a group of French people. I I just remember how all of a sudden I noticed you were tentatively raising your hand in the middle (laughs) of the group and everybody wanted to leave. And they noticed that you raised your hand and they called on you. Right. And so I had kind of screwed up my courage to say something and how I, how was I going to say it in French And so I tried to gently but clearly point out that none of that was in Genesis 2 and 3. I remember the group leader standing up, the retreat leader standing up and saying, okay, well, thank you for that significant point. We are going to need to investigate this further. And can we, before we dismiss here, and everyone was stirring, getting ready to go, he said, 
we need a group to further research this question. We have five people who are students at the University of Strasbourg and were in this Genesis group. We commission you to study this issue and this passage in Genesis 2 and 3 and report back to us the findings. You have access to the university library, which we do not. So we wish you well and uh, come back and tell us your conclusions. That launched us on a year-long study, which extended many years. Two of the people in the group dropped out, and so there were three of us left. And finally, Bruce and I were the ones who ended up following this all the way to the end. And that's how I ended up writing my dissertation on this passage. It was to fulfill this request from these friends in the Vosges Mountains from this church in Strasbourg, France. Well, there's so many details that come to mind. I, I really remember those great days. The people all met on a monthly basis, and you gave a presentation on Genesis 2, and then the following month on Genesis 3, and we went on from there. Let's move to the True 316 Foundation, Joy. Most people just don't launch a nonprofit ministry from scratch. And that's our case here at the True 316 Foundation. Since we launched the Eden Podcast, we've benefited from the teamwork of volunteers who have added to our strength. I'm thinking of our daughter, Christy, who's been the announcer on the Eden Podcast since the beginning and now is a board member of the True 316 Foundation. There's Joanne Hagemeyer, a former Bible study fellowship teaching leader and area advisor who wrote the study guides found inside all four volumes in the Eden book series, on the key passages on women and men. And she's been my co-host on season six to nine. There's Jessica Nagy who put together The Eden Course on Genesis two to three, which you can find online at theedencourse.com. There's Mimi We Met and Jean Bearden who are each leading our Zoom workshop small groups. Other volunteers include Mike and Les and the other Jean, and there are the many listeners who point people to the Eden podcast and the Book of Eden on their social media posts and in their private conversations with family, friends, and church members. But now we're leveling up, as they say, with the launch of the True 316 Foundation. So, Dr. Joy Fleming, what is your goal and what do you want to see accomplished by the work of the True 316 Foundation? Well, we want to see translations correct. So we're using the phrase, translators informed. Bible Translations Transformed. In the coming season of the Eden Podcast, we're going to present the chapters of your book, Man and Woman in Biblical Unity, Theology from Genesis 2 and 3. Thanks for listening to the Eden Podcast. Do you have your own copy of the Book of Eden, Genesis 2 to 3, and our other books on the seven key passages on women and men in the Bible? Visit our website at true316.com. Do you want to go deeper? You're invited to enroll in the current study unit of True School. Take a look. Go to true316.com slash school. True 316 Foundation is the home of the Eden Podcast. Join us for $3.16 a month or more. Let's true the verses on the key passages on women and men. Go to true316.com slash partner. True 316 is strengthening and encouraging many, and we're getting stories every day of lives changed through our ministry. We're the home of the Eden Podcast, and we're getting the word out that God didn't curse Eve or Adam or limit woman in any way. Our volunteer help is wonderful, and we grow stronger with each new true partner who gives to the True 316 Foundation so that we can cover the costs to do the technical work of the Eden podcast, to coordinate our true school workshops like the two-week Eden workshop on Genesis 2 and 3, and to make the True 316 Foundation function in its outreach to scholars and students around the world. You can give now with a one-time gift. And better still, you can join now and become a monthly donor. We call our monthly donors our true partners. Please join now by going to true316.com partner.